So maybe you landed here on this video because you've noticed your makeup is making your eyes feel irritated or dry. And you might even think that's normal because it seems to happen to all of your friends, no matter which brand you choose or how much it costs. The truth is that what you use around your eyes ends up in your eyes and absolutely has an impact on eye inflammation and even eye disease. So in today's video, I'd like to cover why makeup is probably to blame and more importantly, give you some helpful tips to find some alternative products that won't irritate your eyes. This is Eye School with me, Dr. D, where I teach you about products and treatments related to dry eye syndrome and eye beauty. I'm an eye doctor that treats patients with dry eye and I pay special attention to makeup and skincare. I even have an esthetician that I work closely with in my practice. I'm obsessed with helping you achieve beautiful, comfortable, healthy eyes. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you enjoy my videos as I do publish weekly. There seems to be a huge misconception that makeup and skincare have nothing to do with the eyes or ocular surface. Over and over, I talk to patients or colleagues or viewers on this channel who don't realize the impact that cosmetics and skincare can have on the ocular surface. In optometry school, we had exactly zero lessons on makeup and skincare. Yet when I started in practice, I found that my patients were asking almost daily about eye safe makeups and how to choose them. Before we get started in today's video, I'm going to just assume that you're applying your makeup safely, avoiding the waterline, and never ever sleeping in it. This video is for you if you swear you're wearing makeup safely and correctly, yet you still feel eye irritation. So first, studies show that particles contained within cosmetic eye products can migrate to the ocular surface and destabilize your tear and lipid structure and result in discomfort and dry eye syndrome. At even low levels, BAK or benzylconium chloride, a common preservative, kills meibomian gland cells within one day. Here are the top reasons your makeup might be hurting your ocular surface. The first is waterproof. Waterproof mascara is a common reason for eyes to be irritated or feel dry. The chemical that makes it waterproof is called dimethicone, which is very drying to the lashes. In addition, waterproof makeup tends to be more difficult to remove, requiring more elbow grease to get it off. All this rubbing on the sensitive periocular region doesn't help with dryness or irritation. In a perfect world, avoiding waterproof mascara is the most ideal solution. Mascara in general is an eye irritant and its use can cause eye irritation as well as eyelashes falling out or loss. Using water to remove waterproof varieties increases lash loss as well. The second thing in your makeup to consider are the preservatives. So you would think that if you can buy a cosmetic in the store, it must be tested and proven to be safe, right? The FDA Act does not require cosmetic products and ingredients to be approved by the FDA before they go on the market. Some of the worst ingredient offenders include BAK, formaldehyde, parabens, and phenoxyethanol. Keep in mind that it's incredibly difficult to find makeup without any of these ingredients, and that's just because the U.S. bans very few ingredients compared to other countries in Europe. Ingredients should be listed from highest to lowest concentration, but any ingredients that are at less than 1% can be listed in any order, making it very confusing to figure out exactly what you're putting around your eyes. Next, we have glitter, and there are two main types of glitter, both of which can have an impact on your eyes. The first is craft glitter that you might find at stores like Michael, Michaels or Joanne Fabrics or Hobby Lobby. These contain larger particle sizes and can be made from plastic, metal, or even glass. They're often coated with dyes and they can be very, very problematic, as you would assume, to the ocular surface. I mean, you don't want metal or glass or dyes near the ocular surface. And then the second type of glitter is cosmetic glitter, which is made from microplastics and can have smaller particle sizes typically. They can be biodegradable, but are not always. Craft glitter is generally more abrasive. If it makes contact with the eye, it can cause damage like a corneal abrasion that can even lead to an eye infection or an ulcer. Cosmetic glitter is generally less dangerous for the eyes, but some cosmetic products containing glitter could still damage your eyes if they get somewhere they're not supposed to be. 
In general, glitter can cause irritation, inflammation, foreign body sensation, that feeling like something's in your eye, infection, corneal abrasion, damage to the meibomian glands, and allergic reaction. The FDA does not currently consider any type of glitter as completely eye safe. Next, it's important to look out for unsuspecting ingredients in your makeup, the first of which I'll talk about is retinol. Although wonderful for a whole host of skin issues like pigmentation, wrinkles, elasticity, and even though retinol is highly encouraged by almost all dermatologists, the reality is that retinol and derivatives of retinol can be very damaging to the meibomian gland. That's because retinol is really good at working on sebaceous glands, and you guessed it, those precious little friends I call the meibomian glands are indeed sebaceous glands. I have seen patients with meibomian gland atrophy after Accutane, which is obviously much more powerful um, tretinoin than the over-the-counter versions of retinol. Um, but I've also seen patients that have been using retinol serums, um, and creams daily and it's important to flip over your labels and make sure that your makeup doesn't contain retinol as it can show up in the most unsuspecting of places. And I have even seen my booming gland atrophy in my patients who use simple eye creams with retinol in them. Next we have lash growth serums which have various ingredients but the most problematic type can be prostaglandins or prostaglandin derivatives. Not only do prostaglandins possibly darken the lid margin and even the iris, they can also cause periorbital fat loss. 4% of Latisse users experience itching, redness, and watering with its use. There's also the potential for infection or bacterial transfer, not only from your lash serums, but your makeups as well. Mascara tubes and eyeliner are perfect little breeding grounds for bacteria to flourish. Think about it, these applicators touch the lids and lashes directly and are then placed into their dark, wet little homes where bacteria is just able to multiply. This is why your lash wand or eyeliner stick could be to blame when you get a sty or internal hordeolum. Be careful with that wand, change out your makeup every two to three months and go to a doctor right away if you believe you might have a lid infection. The next way that makeup can cause um, eye irritation is from a literal scratch, right? So mascara wands are notorious for causing corneal abrasion. So just be careful out there, friends. If one does occur, use artificial tears and call your eye doctor. And then we have allergies and hypersensitivities and contact dermatitis. If you are allergic to something in a, in a um, cosmetic or have a hypersensitivity to any of the ingredients in your makeup, you may develop a contact dermatitis. And this can manifest as redness and swelling. And sometimes it looks like crepey thickened skin around your eyes. You can also have swelling around your eyes as well. So finding your holy grail makeup is a task worth undertaking for sure, but it can be extremely difficult especially here in the U.S. where there's only 11 banned ingredients as compared to Europe where there's thousands banned. Keep in mind that hypoallergenic brands do not necessarily guarantee that they won't cause irritation or redness. It's important to become a student of your makeup brands. Flip over those bottles and study the ingredients and preservative against my suggestions above. So that's going to be it for today's iSchool lesson. Class is dismissed and I'll see you next time.